What's up guys, Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Brace Explained. Hope you guys have been doing well and if this is your first time on the channel, welcome. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're new here to stay up to date with all of these videos. Today what we're going to be talking about is a question that a lot of you guys have had and it's something that's a little bit older in orthodontics but very, very useful and that's headgear. So let's go. So the purpose of headgear is that it uses your skull as an anchor. Now, if you guys don't remember what an anchor is, I reviewed this in a previous video called TADS, which I'll put in the description of this video. What it does is that every orthodontic movement has an equal and opposite reaction, just like two people in rolling chairs. Now let's say you want to move your upper teeth back towards the back of your head. Well, there's a number of ways you can do this. You can use functional appliances like herps and maras, or you can use elastics but all of these have the side effect of moving your lower teeth forward. Now, if you want to have something that is an anchor that doesn't move, you can use TADS like we discussed in a previous video. But before TADS were around, we used something called the headgear. In certain people, TADS don't work and sometimes they fall out, whereas headgear is something that's more tried and true because it uses the back of your head as an anchor. If you use headgear at a low enough force, what it actually does is it causes your upper teeth to go backwards using your skull as the anchor. If you use headgear at a heavier force, some believe that what it'll do is it'll actually hold your upper jaw back and prevent it from growing, which will help correct an overjet, which we discussed in a previous video, what a lot of people call an overbite, where your upper teeth are way far forward compared to your lower teeth. There's different types of headgears that can be used. There's a cervical pull headgear, which goes around the lower part of your neck. And this is what a cervical pull headgear would look like. It'll use the back of your neck as an anchor and have an elastic force, which pushes your upper teeth back or your upper jaw back. There's a high pull headgear, which holds onto the top of your head. What it does is it uses the top of your head as an anchor and has elastic bars right here that will push your upper teeth or your upper jaw backwards. And there's a combination headgear, which is somewhere in between. So the type of headgear, whether it's a cervical pull or a high pull or a combination headgear, will be decided by orthodontists based off your bite and what they are trying to achieve. The way the headgear is set up is that there is this inner bow that goes inside your mouth and this outer bow that attaches to the elastic. The bands in your mouth have little slots for the headgear tubes to fit into. And this outer bow attaches to the elastic that pulls. And it provides a force which will bring your upper jaw backwards or your upper teeth backwards. Your orthodontist will prescribe the force and the amount of time that they want you to wear it. But remember, just like elastics, the more you wear it, the more efficient that they will be. So try and get as much wear as you can while you're at home. And that's just a quick summary of what headgear is used for. It can be used in many different ways, but primarily what it's used for is to either bring your upper teeth backwards or limit the growth of your upper jaw to fix an overjet or like many call it an overbite. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys next time on Braces Explained. For now, Dr. Greg, 